other tests, the child might get uh, a score of 60 IQ or something, and then they use the lighter, and uh, they find that it's really, they have some abilities that have been masked by the verbal requirements of the other tests. So they'll get a, you know, a score like 80 or even 90. Uh, so children with uh, autism, for example, are uh, restricted in their social interaction, and that includes speaking back and forth. So these are tests that do not require any speech at all on the part of the child or the examiner. We have uh, very uh, clear directions of pantomime kind of movements and gestures that you use, and everything is pretty much picked over. There are children that maybe are recent immigrants to this country that weren't didn't come from a uh, strong educational background. They may not have really been able to even attend school. So the more you can use pictures and movements of objects and toys and that kind of thing, the, the better to get a real assessment. There's a cognitive section which leads to a nonverbal IQ, and there's not that many tests out there that will give you an actual IQ, you know, for a nonverbal test. And uh, then the other side of the test is is uh, in the realm of attention, memory, and more into the neuropsychological section, which comes in handy. Children with you know, let's say learning disabilities or something, sometimes will look good in terms of the cognitive profile, but there are certain difficulties they have with attention, and we don't want to mix the two. You know, there's a, a kind of a uh, worldwide change emergence of uh, Alzheimer's disease and other kinds of dementia. So the uh, memory sections there being nonverbal allows you to work with someone that maybe as uh, an elderly adult has lost some speech ability or uh, you know is is even has immigrated to this country and for some reason needs some testing. Yeah. Uh, this kind of nonverbal test is better than a standard uh, test that requires them to speak in English throughout